now it is time for the Premier Class. It's time for the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. It is time for the Premier Class here for the highest class that we have racing and definitely one to look out for because these are officially the stars of the future. 11 bikes on the grid and as we see yesterday, three different race winners. Three different race winners, a tremendously uh, tight grid here and this is the one that they all care about more than anything else uh, of, of the entire weekend. So this is uh, this is crunch time uh, and they have to be, be able to uh, to perform now uh, in, in uh, round two, race one of round two coming up for you. Yep, you can just see now the riders heading into the shortcut section, but now all queuing up to do a quick practice start on these mini GP70 machines. Three of them in a row, Marco Holt doing it now, Harry Payne and Blake Wilson all going into the infill section. Before we get started with our two um, two warm-up laps, there's your pole man, Archie O'Brien, ready, of course. He wasn't there in the 50 race, but he's here in the 70, and he'll be raring to go. Absolutely, and that, that just piles the pressure on a little bit more here for Spider-Man Archie O'Brien. Uh, as he were, had a fastest lap there in um, in the previous round of a 41.279, only one tenth of a second uh, faster than Luke Fitchett. Yep, only one tenth of a second. You can see that on track because it's absolutely nail biting stuff. You can put a blanket over everyone here on the grid, and you can see why because these guys are so so quick around the sled circuit. But you can see on the bike there, the uh, Danny Webb's uh, GP camp, and that's um, that's helping all these riders. Uh, uh, get better and better. Yeah, the Dynaweb GP camp, um, great supporter here at Fabio, great supporter to all these young riders. They take them to Spain, they take them in the UK, teach them about setting up their bikes, going on track blocks, talking about certain parts of the corners and just doing tuition and coaching, which you wouldn't get anywhere else. But Archie O'Brien will start on pole position with Luke Fitchett alongside him. Blake Wilson will start in third with Henry McCartney in fourth. Our third row of the grid will be occupied by Wilson Delt and Marco Holt, who hopes to have a better day today. Ollie Sims starts in seventh position with Bill Harris alongside him. Finger Paul Hill starts in ninth with Austin Johnson in tenth and Harry Payne rents out our 11 bike L's to helmets mini GP70 British Championship grid. Yeah, a kind of medium sized grid for us uh, here at, uh, at Lid, but it was nothing like medium in terms of drama yesterday. It was fantastic stuff, so can't wait to see how uh, this, uh, this next uh, round begins. Race one of three today. Yep, it was certainly fab racing yesterday. Now we await for these riders to do their warm-up. Before we get underway, of course, some of these riders, um, such as Archie O'Brien, it will be the first time on track today due to not competing in the Mini GP50 race. So he's really got to warm up his brain, especially yeah. because now we're after midday at this point and he's still not properly been out on track. Absolutely, and we know that Luke Fitcher has been uh, has been very strong as well um, through uh, through his uh, performances so far today so a little bit of an advantage for him i wonder what uh, what the reason was that we didn't see archie brown earlier yeah we'll try to find out at some point but archie o'brien spider-man helmet leads the way in the front row of the grid blake wilson some final checks being done henry mccartney a slight different look to him this year a slight different bike but He's just Gold as fast. Pink leathers, yeah. <laughs> yes, he's just as fast as what he was last year, though he's a master in the wet conditions. 11 bikes on the grid. 11 bikes staring to the lights. The lights go on. And the lights go off and we go oh. race. A slow reaction there from Archie O'Brien. Luke Fitch it takes the race lead. Henry McCartney bumps up to third position ahead of Blake Wilson. But drama further down the field. I think that was Mark Holt. Um, creating a gap and queuing up some people but Ollie Sims managed just to get in front of him and Ollie Sims is now promoted into what is fifth position so a great start there from Luke Fitcher on number seven but Archie O'Brien is going to have loads of work to do see Bill Harris also there further down the pack Harry Payne at the back of the field at the moment but all these riders so quick and Luke Fitcher is great at defending and now he leads the way what a, an amazing start from Luke Fitcher comparative to uh, Archie O'Brien who, who has struggled I think to hold on to, uh, to his second place, but he'll be dialed back in very quickly, I'm sure, and he'll be uh, shaking off any uh, any uh, uh, track rust that he might have had uh, uh, comparative to the rest of the drivers, but it is Luke Fitchett in the lead, and with the f this lap of 42.9 on that first lap here of 
uh, of 12 overall. Yeah, it was Archer O'Brien in second position. It's something which we've seen for about the past season now. He's just struggled to get that bike off the line, get that clutch in the perfect fighting point, and be able to drag it out to the perfect uh, round. He's in the power band, but Archie O'Brien, number 91, second position, he can still work from there. He hasn't lost too many positions, only one, but it's Luke Fisher in front of him. And now well, that's Blake Wilson. Whoa. Wow, that came from nowhere. Yeah. And now he's ahead of Henry McCartney. That definitely would have gave Henry McCartney a wake-up call. Blake Wilson, from so far back, he must have just thought, you know what, this looked possible. And now the number eight is in third. Absolutely. Go, a game for it here is, uh, is Blake Wilson. So up to third position now on a potential podium, but he won't be happy with that one. He'll be going for more. And uh, just behind them, a pair of riders just super, super close as they go through the S's, but just about... Uh, lack of contact and that, that was uh, that was nail biting stuff Marco Hop there just uh, uh, losing out was it to Ollie Sims or is he just trying to make the attack and it didn't work yeah he's just trying to make the attack Ollie Sims got the better of him off the line and now Marco Holt is still trying to get that position back and still trying to get back into the top five because Marco Holt is so so quick in the 70s as we've seen before but he should be slightly off the pace as we came with him still trying to break in the engine but here is the battle for third, and here is nothing between Blake Wilson and Henry McCartney. Henry McCartney will definitely want to give his own back. Definitely, yeah, he'll be uh, ready to go for it. He's also, he's also got a very close battle for the lead. Luke Fitchard still now just three tenths of a second ahead of Archie O'Brien. Yeah, just three tenths ahead of Archie O'Brien, um, and Archie O'Brien putting in a 41. Point three, which is an incredibly impressive around this circuit and previously that would have gave you the lap record but now um, from yesterday's racing you know that lap record is now a 41.2 and Archie O'Brien actually I believe may have just got the lap record there so Archie O'Brien very very quick on the number 91 from Luke Fitchett so very very quick racing going yeah, on. just under three tenths then at the lead of the race but it is even closer here in the battle for third position Blake Wilson has a to uh, distance uh, uh, again Henry McCartney after making that overtake that beautiful overtake that, uh, that he managed to uh, to launch from a super long way back and here they are then the leaders Luke Fitchett and uh, and Archie O'Brien in the distinctive Spider-Man helmet and, uh, and leather uh, arrangement in, in bike number 91 but Luke Fitchett looking very calm at the moment and very uh, at ease with his uh, with his bike management yeah very very at ease and now they still are powering through and powering as fast as they can. They are running such high pace at the moment. Archie O'Brien is so quick. He's still trying to push as hard as he can. Just a couple of thousands of a second from the lap record, which was said yesterday. So these two riders have been battling for many years and you can just see how hard they're having to push to keep with each other. Yeah, Luke just getting a little bit unsettled there through the, uh, the difficult corner, but down they go towards the final corner. Uh, and uh, so far, Luke Fitchett doing a great job to hold off the advances of uh, Archie O'Brien. It's a new lap record. Archie O'Brien, a 40.9. Wow. The first rider to break it into the 40 barrier in the Mini GP70. Heading into this weekend, the lap record was held by Bailey Stuart Campbell for 41 point. Free, but now we're in the 40 seconds, a 40.9 from Archie O'Brien. Wow, that is so, so impressive. Luke Fitchett, he would have broke that record himself for literally three sets of a second before it was taken away from him. <laughs> incredible stuff, absolutely incredible as these guys are taking this, uh, this category to new levels here. Uh, Archie O'Brien and Luke Fitchett, fantastic. Yep, fantastic. Once again, that lap was slightly slower, 40 flat again from Luke Fitcher. It's still incredibly, incredibly fast. Five laps to go in this race. The lap record's now held by Archie O'Brien, but of course, these two riders have some history. Archie O'Brien took his first Ellis to Helms Mini GP70 British Championship win last year at the Rup in very, very tricky conditions, but in the depth of that, he made contact with Luke Fitchett, which results in Luke Fitchett falling off the motorcycle. So these two have some history, but they still respect each other. It was just a race incident, and these things can happen. Right, a slightly slower lap that time from Archie O'Brien. He's left a, a much bigger gap there to uh, Luke Fitchett. I mean, we're talking about um, about uh, less than a tenth of uh, less than a second, but uh, it still opened up a fair amount. And now we focus on the battle for third position. Blake Wilson has not been able to match the pace of the riders in front of him. 
but he's just about doing enough to stay ahead of uh, Henry McCartney, who is keen to uh, get himself uh, back onto that podium. Yep, he is very keen to get himself back on that podium. I think everyone in his camp will be very happy for that to happen, but so today's perfect conditions for racing. The wind is nowhere near as strong as yesterday, which makes it far more enjoyable for these riders on that bike, and that is how we've seen lap records drop. Mark Holt, though, he's still struggling to get past Ollie Sims. Yeah, what what do you put that down to? Is You, you were saying that he's not quite used to the to the bike. He was actually putting his foot down there on the, on the approach into the final corner. Yeah, well, quickly, Luke Fitchett has just broke the lap record once again, a 49 8-5 and now Mark Holt he's definitely trying his hardest to get past all his sense but yeah um, he's just putting his foot down doing the doctor's dangle trying to trying to create some kind of blockage the, the leg dangle but yeah he's just trying to get used to that bike get used to that engine the engine's just doing this weekend and the lack of right. practice time right. has meant it's just not broken in yet it's just not its full potential so he's still got a bit of work to do before that bike's 100% sixth place then currently for Marco Holt uh, but soon to be fifth as he <laughs> manages to uh, get that engine working pretty well enough to uh, get the top speed and, and complete the move on the brakes. Con uh, fantastic move there from Marco Holt. Yeah, Marco Holt there using all the track and then some coming <laughs> over the line. He was bouncing his way back onto the circuit. So these guys clearly pushing on. This group right here for everyone at home is Marco Holt, Ollie Sims, Bill Harris and Philly Paul Hill. And there's Philly Paul Hill getting ahead of Bill Harris actually for what will be seventh position. And uh, he's not done, he's not done taking yet. He's, he's got himself up the inside. And uh, again, another fantastic move. Two moves in the space of one sector from Finley Polhill. Luke Fitchett has managed to build a gap though now, Lewis. Yeah, Finley Polhill racking up positions, but Luke Fitchett at the front. 1.2 seconds now. Very, very good lap time. Now it is last lap time. The number seven of Luke Fitchett leads the way from Brian, Archie O'Brien looks like he has no answer this time around. No, it looks like uh, his, uh, his, his challenge has, uh, has run its race now and it's, uh, it's all about can Luke Fitcher keep it together. Yeah, can Luke Fitcher keep it together? Young, let's keep it together for one more corner, one more breaking zone, one more point to open up the throttle. The number seven, the Luke Fitcher, comes around the final corner to take the checker flag, to take the opening round two win. For the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship, Archie O'Brien will come home in second and Blake Wilson should come home in third. This is the battle for fifth position for the final position in the top five as Mark Holt takes it from Finley Paul Hill. Yeah, tremendous stuff. Uh, fantastic. They won't know about that lap record until, until they get back to the pits, but a fantastic extra bonus for those uh, for those riders. That is uh, Luke Fitch and Archie O'Brien. Tremendous work today and what a race we have. Yeah, what a race we had. A great, great result from Luke Fitcher. Exactly what he would have wanted today on the number seven. Luke Fitcher looking very, very strong all the way throughout the race. He looked very, very consistent. I don't think he made one mistake all the way throughout that race. No, there was a, a hint occasionally that he was pushing hard, but he just he gathered it back again and, and, and knows where knows where the limits of that bike are. He, he really feels, uh, it looks, from my, from my eye, it looks to be at one with it. Tremendously, yep. tremendous uh, work from Luke Fitchett, saving his best until when it matters most here today uh, 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 through this uh, series of races for round one. Yep, and now you can see the riders coming into the pit lane as Luke Fitchett will come home to take victory by 1.1 seconds from Archie O'Brien. Blake Wilson rounds out our podium in the mini GP70 class with Henry McCartney in fourth, Marco Holt rounds out our top five with Finley Boyle making up great positions on the final couple of laps and now Ollie Sims seventh Bill Harris eighth Austin Johnson ninth and Harry Payne ran out our top ten but yeah very very close race lap record broken about three or four times <laughs> with Luke Fitchett taking it away Uh, fantastic, and not only that, but but that uh, that f lap record was uh, was only four thousandths of a second away from Archie O'Brien's fastest as well. Uh, just uh, just fantastic to see these two riders uh, absolutely pushing each other to new heights. Yeah, it's fantastic. You can see now the riders talking. I believe that's Bethany Ashby and Annabelle McCarthy as Harry Payne. So talking about that race, talking about what happened, a top ten finish from Harry Payne. Of course, he had that awful crash last year at Clandell at the final corner. At the final corner. So you still get his confidence up slightly from that. And um, yeah, it'll be great to see him back at the front again. But all the riders now in pit lane, having chats with their parents, talking about the race and talking about how they've done better. But 
of course, um, we have highlights from round one coming up because now we are on our lunch break. Yep, so uh, enjoy enjoy the highlights and we'll be back for you uh, very shortly for, for race two, the rounds of race two uh, coming up here at round two of Lid uh, Karting Circuit of the uh, Fab Racing Mini Bike British Championships. So next up will be the premier class here at the Fab Racing. It'll be the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. It is the class that all the young racers look to be in in the future, and it is the talent of the future. My name is Lewis Ray, and joined alongside me, once again, is a special guest, Sullivan Mansi. You're back again. Hopefully this time we can get some good racing in. Yeah, well, I've decided to come back and just see how it was. Um, and because I know this is a very talented class with a lot of upcoming riders and I'm pretty sure the whole grid will get somewhere in racing because it's a very tight class and they're all very talented riders. Yeah, they're all talented riders. 11 riders on the grid. This year we've seen many GP70s and many GP50s explode in entries. I mean, we've seen 11 mini GP70 is compared to just the six or seven that we've seen and same with the mini GP50 is 23 this year so why do you think it is that we've seen such an increase in numbers um the way it's always been it was the last time it was this busy was when i was riding and it's really good because it's getting busy again the 50s is fully packed there's a lot of rookies in there um so i do know it's a bit frustrating for the fast guys but everyone's got to start somewhere on a gear bike and this is a really good place for them to start. Exactly, it's this great learning environment. As we see all the riders waiting to head out on their warm-up lap for what is going to be a great race, it's going to be Archie O'Brien who starts from pole position with Luke Fitchett alongside him. Blake Wilson and Henry McCartney will be on second row of the grid with Wilson, Delson, Mark Holt and fifth and sixth. All Ollie Sims and Bill Harris will be starting seventh and eighth with Finn Paul Hill and Austin Johnson on the fifth row of the grid in ninth and tenth. And Harry Payne rounds out our grid. So Sullivan that's it. If there's one or two riders that you really have to look out for on this grid, who who would you say? Um I'd say I'm being a bit biased because I help uh, Luke Fitch it out, but I know he's got the pace for it. Um and Marco and Blake, I know they're really good talented riders but you can't cancel Henry McCartney Wilson he's been struggling a bit this weekend but Finley Polehill he's been coming up and Archie O'Brien's been at the front the whole time it's you can't really choose who's going to be their two favourites but um, I'm definitely going to be cheering on Lucas he's one of the riders I've helped and helped since rookies well Wilson Delts has said struggling this weekend but he's been he's been going very very well and there is the start marshal waiting and actually some work being done actually refueling Archie O'Brien's bike on the grid there so potentially under fueled it so I don't know if you're allowed to do that but we'll wait and see the point to the lights the lights go on and the lights go out and we go racing. Archie O'Brien struggled with his start once again, but he leads the way. And Luke Fitcher in second position. Henry McCartney in third. And Blake Wilson in fourth place. Archie O'Brien, though, leads the way after some drama before the race even started. Yeah, well, I'm not even uh, sure if you're allowed to do that. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to get away with it. But it looked like there was a couple of rolling wheels where they got it perfectly timed or were a little bit ambitious. Um, but... Marco's had a little bit of a tough start uh, so far as I'd be more expecting him to be up at the front of the grid. And we've seen Archie O'Brien struggle with the start on a geared clutch bike um, for about a year now. So whenever you're making that transition from a mini moto, what's the trickiest part of getting used to? It's about getting the uh, right movement between the clutch and the throttle as uh, I've been pretty good at starts and uh, the riders nowadays have got a different technique to me. I was always keep it flat out and let the clutch out gently without pinging it. Um, these guys are more ring, 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 ring. So it's a different technique, and if you get it perfect, it's even better. If you get it wrong, it's worse, and Archie's not got that timing right. Um, but I think a couple of people just got a little bit ambitious at the start of that one. So they didn't get the best of starts. Yeah, you see a couple of riders just blocking the throttle on the starting grid now, but Luke Fitcher in second position at the moment, trying to find a way past Archie O'Brien. Fastest lap of the race goes to Luke Fitcher. One and a half tenths of a second separates them at the line. So Luke Fitcher 
right now, what would you be doing if you were in his position? Ten laps to go, it's quite a long race still. Would you be going for it and just try to build a gap or would you be set behind trying to learn something? Well, I've spoken to Luke about it and I know he's got the pace to pull away. It's just about getting past Archie and it's kind of helped me being behind Casey because I've been able to give Luke all the good overtaking places and the places which are a bit more risky and he knows what he needs to do. It's just about putting it into action and he can do it. He's been behind him a couple of times and been able to overtake him multiple times. So Archie's going to be learning where the strong places are for Luke and where the weak places are and vice versa for each one of them. And we've seen Blake Wilson there again off the track and Henry McCartney in fourth position. Now, now Mark Holt struggling a little bit this weekend. Still in a good ride, still in the mix, but not where we normally see him at the front. Yeah, well, I think he's just had a struggle with qualifying and um, they've been able to get a better uh, qualifying position as he was down in eighth now, starting in fifth. And he's now battling for third, but... I'm definitely sure he would rather be where he is in the 50s, which is up battling for the win and not for the podium, last podium place. But I'm sure he'll be pretty happy with how he's doing as there's still eight rounds, nine rounds of this championship and three races at each round. So it's been really good. And I think he'll be able to put that into effect and actually get better results than he has done at this first round. So will Henry McCartney. Well, we see Henry McCartney losing this pack with Luke Fitch at centre, 41 flat, the fastest lap of the race, just two tenths behind Mark Holt. But Henry McCartney losing this pack, it's quite a lot of riders that are now in this train behind him. Now, Henry McCartney, we've seen multiple times him taking race wins, surprising race wins, with some of them in the wet. And um, he's quite good in the wet, as Henry McCartney. And weather conditions obviously playing a big part in the races here at Fab this weekend. It's quite windy, so how does the wind affect you on the bike? Um, me, not so much, as it's a small bike and I'm a heavy rider on it. Um, so is Henry. Henry's a tall rider. Not so much uh, muscle, more just uh, height, but he's still a really big rider. Um, but yeah, it's really, really good, this is. Uh, oh, there you go. Blake might be going for a move on Henry, but it's going to be getting tight, and I know they're all be trying to stick a couple moves on each other. Yeah, they are. They're trying to take a couple moves on each other right now in this massive train. We've seen multiple times at the Lloyd Circuit. It's almost like a Moto3 race, as we've seen now. F five or six bikes in this grid. And Blake Wilson always going off the track out of that final corner. Was that, a, was that a line that you would want to be taking? Um, it's a bit too wide. It's more going out of your way, going out that wide. Um, especially because it's not smooth. Or if it was tarmac, yeah, possibly. But it's more bumpy, horrible, broken up tarmac. Um, but no, it's really good, and Blake's lining him up. He knows where he needs to do it now. It's just about doing it. Um, I think Marco's now going to be trying to get involved because Marco's been watching this battle, and I think... Oh, and there you go. There's another person down. Just shows how hard they're all pushing. Yeah, it's pushing there, and that is Bill Harris. So Bill Harris crashing there with six laps to go in the mini GP70 race. Yeah, well, it just shows how hard these guys are pushing. This is the top level of motorsport at their oh. age, and there's the... Blake Wilson there crashing out. So Blake Wilson, we've seen how hard he was trying in there. He's very, very angry as Blake Wilson. So he's clearly crossed at someone. And that looks that has been a collision there. Oh, that was a little bit of a... Yeah, clearly um, pointing to the sky um, yeah. there for Blake Wilson. But you can just see there, throwing gravel onto the track. And he's clearly riding right now, quite angry. Yeah, I think he's not going to be too happy about that one. Yeah, I don't think he will either, but the battle still continues. Marco Holt there following Henry McCartney. So Marco Holt trying to get the power on, potentially. When you're in a battle this big, though, incidents can happen. You're so close. It bikes, almost all of them are basically the same, basically the same power output. So every little matters, and that's why we get these collisions. Yeah, well, hopefully Blake's okay. He looks more her ego than anything else. Um, I think he's just had a, a little bit of a upset heart why he's been a bit like that, but hopefully he'll be able to get back on and going again. And here comes Marco. Marco's going to be lining him up now. Um, and here we go. He's going to be lining him up into this last corner. I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to go for it, but there's a little bit more of a motor free wiggle, so it's very hard for Marco to do it as that's what a bit of Casey was. And there we go. Blake Wilson has just pulled into pits, we've been told. Um, but and as I've seen now, 41 dead still for Luke Fitchett. 
um, and he's going now pushing the front two guys and this is a really really good pack as well um, something I'd love to be in is about from third to seventh place um, hopefully what I'm looking forward to having at Silverstone but Marco is taking a wide line Around the right hander into the left and hopefully try and get a power on for the straight. Yeah, hopefully they can get a power on for the straight. Marco Holt looking just to try and find any way past. So where is the key overtaking opportunities? Where would you be wanting to make your overtakes? Where would you be planning to make your overtakes if you're Marco Holt right now? Oh, and there you go. Luke's got a massive gap on Archie O'Brien, um, as we can now see. So he must have been able to get past and just start edging out that gap, staying consistent and pretty much everything I've been saying to him all along and he's been able to put that into action again and I think this year could be his year on the 70 and it's going really good for him. Um, yeah. And uh, Tom will look fetch it just quickly as we head on to the final lap. Whenever his bike behind him this year or even last year we've seen how great he is at defending in the country box. We've just praised him on that. So why do you say is he so good at defending from the person behind him? He's, um, he's not at that good at on the straights and into the breaking at defending this he's um, more of a flowing smooth rider it's always very calm um, he can get he can have moments where he gets a bit angry but so does everyone else i know i do yep so now we're on the last lap and look fetch it powers it out it's a great win from him a very very consistent ride he comes around the final corner to take the checker flag and to take the race when look fetch it takes the race win here on race two for the LS2 helmets mini GP70 British Championship Archie O'Brien comes home in second but for third position going around the final corner now Henry McCartney leads them but will it be Henry McCartney at the line it's been a drag race to the line Mark Holt tries his best but Mark Holt cannot make it work Henry McCartney in third place and Mark Holt fourth Wilson Dilks fifth Ollie Sim sixth and Finley Paul Hill seventh so Luke Fitch it's got to be delighted with that and you have to be delighted with that from Luke yes I am holding in all the cheer I've got but it was a really good race from everyone there shame um, on Marco missing out by 0.054 uh, seconds so it was tight but I know this is how it's going to be all season and it's always going to be adding a ton of pressure and a ton of drama because I know I'm going to be watching every round of this even at BTC even if it's during my race I know I'm not going to be wanting to miss any of these races yeah it's great racing all year and we've seen Luke Fitcher really develop especially in the 70s we've just seen him get faster and faster um, and obviously no Ethan Sparks this year in the 70s so the championship has really been blown wide open and right now there isn't really one rider which you would completely put all your money on for the championship no, there really isn't. Um, I think Wilson Dilks is going to be having a good season uh, when he gets up to speed. I think he's just been struggling more at the start. Same with Henry McCartney. Um, and I think it's going to be a tight season. I think it's going to be a ton of drama. And I just can't wait, to be honest, to get to the next round. Yep, and we've seen how close that racing was there. And we've seen races like that in the British Talent Cup. Why do you think it, why do you think as your personal opinion because you said earlier on that you think the mini GP70s and the metric bikes are the way to go so why do you think that is and why do you think these metrics are so good for these young riders I uh, like them more than the bike I'm training on at the moment this weekend because it's more gears it's more uh, effort it's better to learn because uh, you don't ride a motor three on four gears you ride a motor three on six gears so it's much better craft to learn the, the amount of gears um, and then because it's more easier to do less gears um, but it's, it's just a perfect stepping stone we're just missing that one class here in the UK which is why everyone's going to Spain but I'm hoping that that we'll be able to get that foundation here in England and then we can be able to carry that on from England um, or from Spain to England and have a bit more competition and be able to then transfer to Spain or even be everyone coming over to England So you spoke about the foundation that's currently in England obviously it's got massively better I think it's fair, fair to say even over the last five years so how far away do you think you are how far away do you think we are right now from matching the likes of the Spaniards and Italians with their systems and their programs that they have right now I think we are way closer than we ever have been um, even with this 160 and 190 cup which is really good which takes you to the world stage um, and these guys I know Henry McCartney uh, competed in it and it was one of the front runners um, in the 160s and it's really really good this is and 
I think these are these are most talented kids in the whole of England at their age, um, and still one of the most talented in the whole of Europe. Um, it's really, really good. Yeah, it's really good. Sam, it's a really good race we had there, the highlight race of the weekend. Now it is time for the Premier Class here at Fab. It's the LS2 Helmets Mini GP70 British Championship. It's their final race of the weekend, and it's the final race of the weekend in total here at Fab Race. And 30 races were run today. Run today, 29 finished, one to go. And wow, what a great race to leave to last. We really have saved a, an absolute peach for the uh, for the finish. As uh, some practice starts get underway here as well. Uh, ready to uh, to have a, uh, a fantastic uh, outing for the final race of the weekend, the final race of our um, lid karting circuit uh, round two of the championship here at, at Fab Racing. But this is the one that uh, that everyone is here for, to watch. Yep, it certainly is. You see now the riders lining up on the front row of the grid. It's going to be Archie O'Brien on pole position. Next to Luke Fitchett, we've seen how strong Luke Fitchett was last race he was just great to watch a broke out to O'Brien just after a couple of laps so what's going to happen this race well we're going to have to wait and find out because with it being the mini GP bikes it can sometimes turn into a moto free race last race from about fourth or third all the way down to seventh position there was nothing separating them Blake Wilson also making his way onto the grid Blake Wilson was very very angry after yeah, I, sorry, I was down, I was down near the pit lane for that and he, he destroyed the fairing on his on the front of his bike uh, absolutely seething he was as they go away for their uh, their, their final warm up lap here of the weekend and uh, we will get your grid for you uh, very shortly here he is then Archie O'Brien will lead them away with a fastest lap in the uh, previous round of a 41.279 from Luke Fitchett uh, behind them on row two Blake Wilson and Henry McCartney and starting fifth Wilson Dilks and Marco Holt uh, on row four Ollie Sims will start seventh and we will see Bill Harris in eighth Finley Polhill in uh, in ninth position Austin Johnson in tenth and Harry Payne in eleventh yep so it looks like Raiders are now getting ready Ollie Sims is following Bill Harris through so this is it uh, this is the one all the riders have been waiting for. Yeah, and the one we've all been waiting for as well as, uh, as interested spectators and everybody uh, at trackside. This is what, what, what matters. This is uh, the LS2 helmets, uh, Road to Moto GP, Mini GP70 uh, final race. Yeah, the final race of the weekend here at Fab Racing, here at the Lids Cart Circuit. The final checks being done on the bikes. The tension is certainly high. All eyes are on this race. All eyes have been waiting for this race. The lights will go on. And the lights go out, a long hold there, and we go racing. Luke Fitcher, wow, what a start. Archie O'Brien gets slightly swallowed at the start there, but Henry McCartney, so, so aggressive wow. on Blake Wilson. What can Blake Wilson do, though? Blake Wilson, I'm sure, will be very aggressive this race, but Archie O'Brien trying to get around the outside. He cannot make it work. Down in fourth position now with Mark Holt and Fifth. A queen start from them, but... Fetch it, leads the win, already has a comfortable gap. He does, but uh, I definitely want to call out that start from Henry McCartney up to second from fourth and uh, positioned his bike incredibly well going through that first chicane. Yeah, he did, and now he leads this gaggle of riders of Archie O'Brien just by him. Blake Wilson, Ooh. oh, he clearly wants to make a move of that final corner, wants to clearly push that final corner. His confidence is not gone from that final corner, it's fair to say, but the number eight looking very, very aggressive on that bike. Archie, Archie um, looking great as well. Once he sails into the race, O'Brien should be able to start to push. Absolutely, yeah. He needs to uh, get, get the bike settled, just to mentally recover from a poor start there for Archie. Uh, but uh, he can see his uh, his main rival here, Luke Fitcher, getting away from him. Yeah, you can just see Luke Fitcher edging away at the line. Line around 1.3 seconds between Luke Fitcher and Henry McCartney. Now, what can Henry McCartney do? What will the gap be next time around? And will Blake Wilson and Archie O'Brien get frustrated that they're seeing Luke Fitcher just edge off into the distance? Uh, I imagine so. Henry McCartney did uh, put it put a really good result there that difference is now 2.4 seconds and he's starting to uh, to 
put a bit of a block on around the outside goes Wilson and uh, becomes the inside for the next corner has he compromised himself slightly as Henry McCarty almost leans on his rival and takes the position back that was really smart racing yeah these two riders clearly look like they're ready for it fight between each other. Henry McCartney and Blake Wilson are going all at it right now. The number 8 versus the number 31. They wait on to the back straight towards the final corner. We've seen how strong Blake Wilson can be on the brakes. He definitely closes in there but Archie O'Brien right now is just watching all this unfold in front of him. And it's super close all the way back to maybe 8th or ninth position as well. Uh, that is uh, very close then. Wilson uh, very, uh, very tight behind Henry McCartney, not able to action a move just yet, but he'll be uh, slightly uh, shy of making quite such a move in future because Henry McCartney just came straight back at him. Yeah, he did, and now Henry McCartney on the power, powering it out with Archie O'Brien just behind, and Archie O'Brien really wanted to make this move, but the thing is, if anyone tries to make a move and affects their drive, and it doesn't go successful, the person might be right on their tail, as you can see right now, Archie O'Brien, <laughs> wow, looking down the inside, but the line there just tightens up too much to make a move, it's enough to just the show from wheel though as Blake Wilson will turn the outside again absolutely Marco Holt there uh, right on the back of Archie O'Brien and we've seen those two uh, uh, go uh, go really well today uh, in other categories uh, so uh, Marco Holt building his speed on this uh, on this bike and uh, doing incredibly well here he's currently fifth position Ollie Sims and Wilson Dirks also very close behind and they are so close the front uh, eight drivers down to Pinley Pinney Pole Hill yeah look Fetch at number seven 40.8 last time around, 5.6 seconds ahead between the second fast rider. Blake Wilson on his Benny GP70 bike tried his best to go around the outside. It seems that he's just trying anything to go around the outside. Look at him there once again, and he cannot make it work, though the number eight is in this massive train of riders. It's almost like a Moto3 race, but Byron Johnson is in this race now. Um, he's, it's his, he's one lap down at the moment. I believe he didn't actually make the start of the race, but right. he has started from pit lane in 12th position at the moment. He's just set at 44.8. Yeah, uh, but uh, we focus, of course, on this battle for second, led by Henry McCartney, Blake, Blake Wilson and Archie O'Brien with Marco Holt, Ollie Sims and Wilson Dilks, all within uh, within shouting distance of this uh, of this valuable, valuable second position. Yeah, this valuable second position, you can see how valuable it actually is. Blake Wilson's willing to risk absolutely everything at that first corner. They can see Bill Harris further back down the field as Henry McCartney continues to try his best to keep Blake Wilson behind. It's the most aggressive. I've seen Blake Wilson all weekend, so he's clearly still revved up from that earlier race. Yeah, he's had a fair old while to uh, to to reflect on uh, on what went wrong in the first in, in the previous race, and he's certainly put that uh, putting that into practice. But he can't find a way past yet. Uh, Henry McCartney on the slightly bigger bike. Uh, at least it looks bigger in terms of the uh, in terms of the paint scheme. But uh, Wilson then trying around the outside, trying to get a good drive, and he was strong going into that first chicane. But he puts himself on the rough stuff on the exit of the final corner, and will Archie O'Brien try and uh, capitalise on that one? No way through though, as Henry McCartney's generally sticking more to the middle of the circuit. Yeah, Henry McCartney doing everything he can to defend at the moment with a slightly wider fairing on it on his motorcycle, but. Reason the way, it's Henry McCartney in this in this field right now, all the way down to Finley Paul Hill in eighth position. You can just see no one can fight any way past. They're just falling a one big massive train. But now it looks like Blake Wilson is trying to wind up a move. He's trying to wind up a move down the final corner. What a move! Whoa. Wow! <laughs> Henry McCartney released the brakes there. A little shake of the head. So he clearly was not impressed by that move. Uh, there's definitely some needle brewing between those two. They have come very close i didn't actually see what happened in the previous race i don't know if wilson had had any anything to do with mccartney but these two are, uh, are absolutely fighting incredibly hard and henry mccartney is doing doing the job right now yeah he certainly is on the circuit but blake wilson has some interesting hand gestures after the incident in the last race but now he's cruelly pushing on and he cruelly is trying to get on that podium get in that second position on the podium because right now he's trying to get everything Thing you get wow round the outside Blake Wilson's trying trying to get the slingshot but now Archie O'Brien's there he works his right Whoa. Archie O'Brien down the inside now on the number eight so Blake Wilson trying the new line there has clearly affected him 
And he has. And I, I wonder if Archie O'Brien's been watching Henry McCartney's uh, lines and thinks he might be able to make a difference. But check out the, uh, the lead Luke Fitchett has while these guys fight and have to sit behind Henry McCartney. It's 12 seconds. Yeah, and very, very impressive lap time there from Luke Fitchett. So, so impressive as Ollie Sims there has a slight almost coming together with Wilson Delt. But Archie O'Brien now at the final corner. Can he make it work oh, now? Oh, he's going. Yes, he can. Archie O'Brien down the inside pushes Henry McCartney wide. Will this open the door for Blake Wilson? No, it will not. But it's the final lap time. No way. That has gone so quickly. It's one of the longer races we've had this afternoon. Luke Fitchett is in the lead of this race, but Archie O'Brien has claimed that second place uh, at this early stage. Uh, but can McCartney hold off against Wilson? Yeah, we're going to have to wait and find out. There is your race leader. There is Luke Fitchett, who's going to, who should come across the line to win the final race of the weekend, the final Mini GP70 race. Luke Fitchett wins race three of the L2 Helmets Mini GP70 Championship. Archie O'Brien has escaped this field, but what will Blake Wilson do? Can Blake Wilson make a move? He tried to run the upside once again, Henry McCartney. Henry McCartney, oh, though, keeps oh, representing. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, a hard the line. there. So clearly, something brewing, but seven thousands <laughs> of a second separating Henry McCartney and Blake Wilson. So them two are clearly not happy by each other, but this man is very happy. He's like, where is everyone? 12 second win. I mean, uh, he couldn't ask for a better way to finish this beautiful weekend of racing we've had here at Lid Karting Circuit. Uh, and thanks to uh, Fab Racing, of course, uh, as well. But uh, Luke Fitchett ends the day victorious by 12 and a half seconds. Amazing stuff. And we wait to see the riders uh, come back into the, uh, into the pit lane uh, and uh, celebrations uh, will begin. Archie O'Brien securing that second place. That would be really important points for him. And it was a very impressive run from Henry McCartney too. Very, very impressive. And it's great to see these riders consistently developing, consistently getting down their lap times. But how close they could race with each other without making contact. It's something which Absolutely. is so great to see. But Luke Fitchett is your final race winner of this doubleheader here at Fab Racing at the Lids Cart Circuit. So 12.4 seconds at the line. Archie O'Brien is in second place of Henry McCartney and Blake Wilson duking it out for third and fourth. There's clearly some under um, underlying rivalry there, but Mark Holt is in fifth position. Ollie Sims comes home in sixth with Wilson Delt and Finley Paul Hill in seventh and eighth and rounds out that massive group of riders which we've seen battle for second. In ninth position, it's going to be Bill Harris with Harry Payne coming home in tenth. Byron Johnson comes home in the eleventh with Austin Johnson actually retiring from that race with one lap to go. So we're so caught up in that yeah. massive battle that we didn't notice Austin Johnson. Well, Byron, um, Byron Johnson did finish in that 11, didn't he? And uh, he started in the pit lane. So uh, that was well worth a, a run for him. Yeah, it certainly was. More experience on the bike. Austin Johnson, obviously, with a hope for better. But wow, what a great day it has been at racing. So, Andy, it's been your first weekend here at Fab. How has it been? Well, it's uh, it's been a, an awful lot of fun. Uh, I've really come to uh, to appreciate just uh, just what uh, what this series and this category uh, does for uh, British biking and. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to take part in this event. Uh, you uh, you've been very generous uh, th uh, throughout, uh, Lewis, and uh, it's been uh, it's been great to work with you for the first time as well. Yeah, it's been great to work with you as well, Andy. That was the end of our double header round of the Fab Race and British Mini Bike Championship. We've had 30 races for you today. It's been very very great um, to be honest to put it one it's been amazing um, of how great racing how many races we managed to fit in in just one day oh yeah it's it's been breathless hasn't it um, especially if your job has been talking about it uh, <laughs> for the last two days uh, but it's uh, it's been a fantastic event it's smoothly run uh, beautiful conditions uh, especially these uh, this Sunday and Monday Saturday less so for the for the riders but uh, uh, it's been it's been cold and windy but it's been bright sunshine and the track's been uh, been managed incredibly well. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, closing up uh, very shortly, uh, and we'll be uh, ready to uh, to get going for the for the rest of our uh, season soon. And a big thank you to the incredible hardworking marshals and, of course, the medics who've uh, had some uh, some attention to pay to the riders today and have done so uh, fantastically.